So today we're going to experiment with prefab motion and one of the classic animation um, things you might want to do is a bounce. So of course they've got a nice bounce built in and that's what our exercise is going to be today. So I'm going to go to a new scene and set it up from the start. Uh, I've got a background layer and I'm going to go to my library and just grab a um, a rectangle which I like to have on hand and I think I have it in here somewhere. <laughs> there it is, rectangle. And I'm going to use that as my kind of ground. And one thing I like to do if I'm putting something like a rectangle on the stage is make sure that I've got it, if I want it to cover for example the whole bottom here, make sure I've got it set at zero so that when I publish I don't get a little sliver of another color. And also if you'll notice it's not exactly 800 pixels which is the full width of my movie. So I'm going to um, modify that as well. The height and the Y are um, more or less arbitrary, although I do want to make sure that it is going off the bottom of the stage, so I'm just going to move it down to be a little extra careful. And then I'm going to put my layer in for my eyeball, as, I, as you saw in the example, and I'm going to you know, name it. Maybe I'll name it eyeball or ball or whatever. And... Uh, Go to that first empty keyframe and get, again, from my library, go and get the eyeball. And you can see that it is a graphic symbol. It is not a movie clip at this moment. I'm going to just drag it and put it on the stage. Now, because I had the background on there for 90 some odd frames, um, it automatically puts the eyeball on there for the same amount of time, which Flash is trying to help us out there. So in this case, that's just fine. I'm going to click right on my eyeball and I'm going to open up the window under Windows called Motion Presets. And when you first open it, it looks like this. So it doesn't look like there are any. They are all conveniently stored under default presets. And you can see if you click on them, they give you a little red ball representation of what this thing would do. So the one that I'm interested in today is called Bounce In 3D little preview. All I need to do is say apply and I get this message that says this item can't be tweened with the 3D properties because it is uh, it needs to be a movie clip. So and ask me do I want to convert and create a tween and if I don't I can always cancel but of course in this case I do want to do that so I'm going to say OK and when I do, let's minimize this, I get my tween here. This is a little difficult to see. Um, and you can see that there's kind of arcing lines. Let me change the color so make it hopefully make it a little easier to see. All I did was click on that color square. I'm going to pick a different color, hopefully that we can see better, maybe bright yellow. Okay, and I also have it in outline mode, which I will change. All right, so I hope you can see that a little better. We have sort of four little arcs, three and a half arcs, and then we also have this solid line. Uh, you can see, too, that it put a series of keyframes in, and of course, the moment we're all waiting for is when you play it, it does this bouncing thing. Now, in addition to going up and down, you'll notice that when it hits the ground, it gets squashed, and then as it goes back up into the air, it resumes its normal shape, making it feel very um, jelly-like, I guess you might say. This is a common animation... Um, method of distorting a shape to to sort of exaggerate what's happening. That's one of the things uh, it isn't a technique of animation, it's more or less a principle of animation. So to get this thing to feel like it's bouncing we distort when it hits the ground and then res restore it to its original shape. You can actually even do it more extreme in that when it's flying upward, especially when it's got the highest, the, lo the most impact when it's dropped from the highest height, you could even at this point stretch it. But we're using the um, prefab bounce, and so this is what we've got. Let's watch it one more time. Also, it's coming toward us, so it's getting larger. Now, I happen to have a longer bit of space here, more time, so that the ball, the little eyeball disappears. I could make it sit there, so 
if I want to add on to this tween, uh, this gets a little dicey with flash. Obviously, to add, just add frames, you can just F5. Um, but you'll notice that when I add frames at the end, it kind of messes up the bounce. Um, these prefab ones, see how it kind of it kind of distorted in midair there <laughs> before it hit, and then it hit. So that kind of messed up our uh, prefab bounce thing. So I'm going to undo, get those frames off of there. And what I'm actually going to do is uh, insert a keyframe here, F7, and I'm going to come back here. I'm going to copy this eyeball. Copy. This isn't a copy frame, it's just a regular copy. And then I'm going to do a paste in place so that the eyeball is in exactly the same spot. I'm scrubbing over from the end of the tween to my new one. I'm going to then put a regular tween on this one. Oops, I moved it. Don't want that. I'm trying to click. Of course, I'm on my. Uh, I'm using a touchpad, so it's a little clunky. So I'm going to add a motion tween to this eyeball, and I'm going to extend it so that it ends by using an F5, so that it ends at the same time as my stage or the background gray. And all I want to do in this case is add a little bit of a rotation. So clicking on the tween, not on the object, properties. I'm going to add a little bit of a rotation and you're going to see that it's rolling a little bit. You'll also see that it's got this sort of unusual color angle here. That's because this prefab had a 3D effect on it. Um, which is fine. We don't even need to worry about that at this moment. Um, but that's what's making it, even though I'm just rotating it, it appears to roll forward. So I'm not liking that it's rolling off the stage. This one I can modify because it's my own tween. I'm going to move it up. I'm using the keystrokes here to move it up, to keep it on my gray. And I'm also going to move it to the right a little bit. So hopefully it's going to look like it's just sort of slowly rolling off. And I could even... Uh, add a little bit of an easing out so that it slows down. So let's take a look at that, just that little piece of it. Okay, so far that looks good. I might even want to make it a little longer. So let's come back here and play our full little bouncing eyeball. Use the prefab part. And here's what we've added. Now it looked like there was a little bit of a hiccup. Watch it again. And I believe that that's caused by these two being exactly the same. So what I might do is actually start the rotation here, maybe just by a degree or two. And I can just use my little transform tool. Just a tiny bit. I could use the transform window too. And I could also move it forward, just maybe one one stroke. Let's see if that looks any better. Yeah, that looks a lot more natural. So we'll end it there and then in the next movie we're going to add a little bit of sound and I think you're going to see that that adds a lot more personality to this.